good to see Brother Cadron in service today. Amen. Amen. He's a good young man. Appreciate him being here. Amen. Good to see Noel and all the kiddos. Yes. Good, to, good to see Clayton and Lacey and Cotton and Zadon and Brother and Sister Wilkins. And so Amen. Good to have you all in service with us today. Amen. Praise God. We're going to pray to Lord Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord. God, for the moving of your spirit in this service today. Heavenly Father, God, I ask, Lord, for you to bless this tithe and this offering as it is given unto you and to your kingdom, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Give us unto the Lord. Praise God. I believe Sister Emily has a few announcements to make. Just a few reminders this Friday, April 14th, there is a Global Missions Rally in Marlin at the Haverhams Church. And then this Saturday, weather permitting, <laughs> um, April 15th, we are having our ladies yard sale from 9 to 2 p.m. Um, I'll keep my eye on the weather and I will keep y'all updated on that. Um, Friday, April 21st to Saturday, April 22nd, I believe the men are having a camp out. And then Thursday, April 27th through the 29th is Texas Men's Conference. So if you have not already registered for that or if you've got questions about it, please see Pastor John. And then Friday, April 28th is All Night Prayer. And Sunday, April 30th is a fifth Sunday. So there will be no Sunday school and we will have a meal to follow. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> You're a, you're a man that's 13 years of, of age and older, we want you to go to men's conference. Amen. And I believe it's the uh, 27th through the 29th of this month. And so we would like for all, everyone that can go to go. And I've already reserved hotel rooms and uh, we want you to go. Amen. It'll be a good time. Praise God. Amen. Well, I want to ask this past weekend, our, our young people went to uh, HYC, uh, and so I'm going to ask them to come up here and kind of share a, a brief, brief uh, summary of their experience. <laughs> Amen. Everybody say, Lord, bless these young people. <laughs> Amen. Brother Ethan, why don't you start us off? young people worship and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, the preaching was very good and just proud of these young people and yeah. it was just a good time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the services that they were Holy Ghost packed I was, I was telling Mother Wilkins like, man you know it's just awesome to get filled with the Holy Ghost and get back to our home church. Praise God, and for his first time going on a youth trip, Brother Roland, come on up here. <laughs> Brother Roland went. I think he's feeling he's going to retire from youth work. <laughs> it was an awesome experience, great time, great preaching. I'm just thankful for the Lord, yeah. what he's done, what we're, what we're celebrating today. Yes. And, uh, I learned. 
learn something all the day. It's a danger. There's a danger from Satan's words. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We love having these young people come back full of the Holy Ghost.
almost feel like not preaching this morning because so much was said already. Uh, and uh, I don't want to get in the way of what the Lord is doing seriously. You know. But I am going to direct your attention just for a little bit uh, to the Gospel of John.
but these are written that you might believe. And, you know, there's 66 books here. And I thought throughout the reading of the Word of God, there's so much that we have here made available to us. Yes. But this is not all he did. No, that's right. Oh, this is this no. this is not all he did. Right. This book told hundreds of years before he came that he was going to come. Uh -huh. Amen. By different writers, yeah. different prophets, Amen. from different places, from different time frames, yeah. different types of people, from one gathering sycamores. You know, to others being high-ranking people in political positions, like Daniel. Yeah. And all those things that were written about him that we have, all those things, we have those things written down. And here comes Jesus, the one that they wrote about, doing, fulfilling all of the things that were written yes. Yes. And and man couldn't have done them all. Amen. Couldn't have concocted them all to come to pass. He fulfilled all that was written about him. And then he comes on the scene and he lives amongst us for 33 and a half years. And he displays the miraculous healing the sick, raising the dead, Casting out devils. Again, fulfilling more scriptures. And then he comes to the place of which his whole purpose was. Yeah. And that is to go to the cross. Amen. Yeah. And to die for us. And if that wasn't enough, and it was written in the Old Testament too. All right. Isaiah 53 is one of places really filled with it. But... He fulfills those things. And after he, they see him crucified and hanging on that cross, and they put him into a tomb and also fulfilling more scriptures. And they, on the third day, he's buried. And on the third day, he rises again. And he appears to uh, some of the ladies first yeah. at the tomb, people that loved him and people that were faithful to him. And then those that he had gathered together with him to call them apostles, he appears to them just previous to our reading here. And uh, they're having trouble even grasping it themselves. Again, they're thinking that they are seeing a spirit. And he proves to them that he's not just a spirit, but it is the Jesus that walked with you. You know, the man Jesus. Amen. God manifest in the flesh. That's who he was. To the point he ate some fish with them and honey and comb, I believe it was. And had them, you know, feel him and know that it was him. Yes, amen. Others had come and given them reports and they had a hard time believing it. Right. But he spent a lot of time trying to convince them, causing them to believe, amen, that he was the Christ, yeah. the Son of God, and that in believing they might have life through his name. Yeah. Amen. But this is not all is written. There's many other things. I mean, there's, this is not all that he did. But what we have written is enough yes. Amen. To, to convince anybody. Right. If he had put everything that, any, everything that he ever did into a book, the Bible says, the last chapter of John, the last couple of verses, says, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Right. Amen. But we do have enough. Yeah. You know, like John said earlier, what else can I do yeah. to convince you? Amen. Yeah. This is what we have. 
And this is enough to get us saved. Amen? Amen. To get us where we need to be. Amen. And if this is not enough, nothing's going to do it. Right. Amen? Right. This is what we need. Amen? Praise God. I just want to give a brief on the gospel in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> Again, much of this has already been said. It not said, sung about this morning. But Paul addresses the Corinthians, the Christians there, and he gives them the basic core of the gospel, what the gospel is. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. By the way, the word gospel means the good news. Yeah. The good news. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. You're saved by the gospel, aren't you? Yeah. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. It's not a matter of just believing at one time. Right. That, right. that was said as well this morning. Amen. But we got to believe unto the end, don't That's we? Right. Yes. Praise God. It's not he that starts out, but he that finishes. That's right. And, and by the way, I do believe this is fixing to wrap up. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Then Paul goes on to tell these Corinthians, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Amen? Now, that may not sound like very good news to Jesus, going and dying and being buried, you know, that doesn't sound like very good news, but it's not necessarily the good news to Jesus. It's the good news to us. That's right. And there's a reason why it should be a good news to each and every one of us is because we have a problem. Right. Amen. And our problem lies in our sins. Amen. Right. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse number 23 says, For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God and the gift of God is the Holy Ghost by the way that's what the gift of God is yes. amen? amen praise God the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord in other amen. words I mean just like a person goes and works a job and uh, labors all week and perform certain duties for an employer, amen, at the end of that week or that month or however the pay schedule is for whoever you work for, at the end of that, you get what is called wages. Right. Amen? You get wages. And sin has wages to it. Those that participate in sin, those that uh, have uh, sin in their life, amen, there is a payment for sin. Amen. Now the good news is that Jesus came to die for our sins. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. But we had this problem. You didn't necessarily have to do anything to get this problem. Right. Just be born. Amen. Right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It tells us that in Romans chapter 5, verse number 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, yes. by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, not just a few men, not just the ones in prison, right. you know, not just the ones down in the local jail, right. or not the ones out there that's drunk or strung out on drugs or alcohol, right. but all men, amen. Right. amen. Every man, every woman. Everybody that was born, according to the scriptures, through Adam's sin, death passed upon all sin. I mean, all men. Amen? So death is upon the human race, we'll say. Right, right. I mean, death is there. And the wages of death, what, what comes to you, uh, 
for having sin, the wages of that is death. Amen? Praise God. Amen. But we look in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 9. It says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. Jesus was not an angel. <laughs> Amen? Some people believe that he was an angel before he came to the world. They do believe that. Amen. Praise God. But he was not an angel. Amen. An angel didn't die for us. Right. Amen. He didn't take on an angel form, which I'll cover here in just a few moments. But we see Jesus, who was made. Everybody say he's made. made. He was made of the seed of David, according to Romans 1 and 3. Amen. And in he, uh, Galatians 4 and 4, it says, When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. He was made of a woman, made under the law. Jesus was a real, genuine human being man. Amen? Amen. He was. And he was God too, don't get me wrong. He was God manifest in human form. Yes. Amen? He wasn't God pretending to be a man. Right. He was God incarnate right. as a human being, as a man. Amen? And he did that for a reason, because death has been upon the human race. Amen. Praise God. What does John 3, 16 says? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him I have might be saved. People have life. Amen. Praise God. So Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. What for? For the suffering of death. The purpose of him coming into this world to suffer the death that belonged, the Smith said already this morning, to suffer the death that belonged to me. To suffer the death that belonged to you. Amen. Right. He came. He left a glorious place to come into the this world for suffering. Amen? Amen. Not, not suffering that he, he deserved, but suffering that was going to come upon us. Amen? Amen. God loved us enough to look yes. and bear the punishment that belonged to us. But he went on to say he, he uh, was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Amen. I was supposed to taste that death. Right. You were supposed to taste that death. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, and Jesus didn't just taste death for the people in this room here. Right. He, died, he tasted death for the whole entire human race. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Because there's nobody in the human race that does not have sin. That needs taken care of and needs gotten out of their lives. Amen. The only ones that don't have the sins now are the ones that have converted to Him. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For He hath made Him to be sin. John said this to you. For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin. He was a spotless lamb. Amen. But he had made him to be sin for us who knew, knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. None of us were righteous. And none of us had uh, the ability of, of attaining the righteousness that we needed to be called saved. Amen. Amen. Right. Praise God. We have all our self-righteousness is, the Bible says, filthy rags in Isaiah. Amen. Right. Six. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. He included all of us. Amen. We have turned everyone to his own way. How did we go astray? We turned to our own way. John said that too. Right. Amen. Praise God. And you know what the Lord has done? And the Lord hath laid on him the inequity of us all. Yeah. Peter said it like this. Basically, uh, following this same scripture in Isaiah, Peter, 1 Peter 1 and verse, chapter 2, verses 24 and 5, referencing Jesus, he said, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. He bore our sins in his body on the tree. Amen? Praise God. That we being dead to sins, 
There at John talk about turning from your sin. We've got to be dead to sin. Should live unto righteousness. We've got to change the path, don't we? Yeah. And start living the righteous life. Amen. Praise God. He's imparted unto us His righteousness, which we have no way of acquiring. But He's also called us to start living righteously. Amen. Praise God. And it said, By whose stripes you were healed. For you were as sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. We were like the prodigal. Amen. Amen. As John said. Amen. But we have returned. Amen. Our direction has changed. Praise God. Amen. The great news, the good news about the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus is spoken very well in Isaiah 53 and 11. He, talking about God, shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. In other words, what Jesus went through, the suffering Jesus went through, that is looked upon in the eyes of God and judgment for sin is satisfied. Amen? Right. Praise God. Amen. We no longer have to suffer for sin. Amen? Because of what Jesus has went through, the travail of his soul. Amen? Judgment is satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant, referencing Jesus, just uh, my righteous servant, Justify many, for he shall bear their inequities. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the blood. Thank God Amen. For the blood. Yes. Could he have done anything else? My, my. Oh, John preached. Could he have done anything else? Amen. There's more things that could be written, but we've got plenty. Amen. A hand for us. Amen. That we should be converted to Jesus. Amen. We should. Amen. Uh, be saved today. Amen? Yes. What more does he need to do? Well, right. he not only died, but he was buried. Right. According to Jesus himself in Matthew 12, 40, he says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Where's your heart at? Amen? Right. Come on, it's in the center of your body. Amen? Right. I just had mine worked on. <laughs> they cut a big old line here and they reached in there and I'd been praying for the Lord to get rid of the plaque and he did it. Not the way I expected it. But anyway, he got it done. Praise God. But it's in the center, isn't it? Amen. So hell is in the center of the earth. Amen. Jesus didn't go to hell because he had sins that took him there. Jesus went to hell. It's already been said this morning. Amen. Jesus went to hell because I was supposed to go to hell. Amen. Jesus took the death that belonged to me and Jesus went to hell because I was supposed to go to hell. You see, he fulfilled everything that we were supposed to go through. Amen. In fact, whenever he was on the cross, and a lot of people think that he was forsaken by God whenever he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus was never forsaken. Amen? But I will have to tell you this, that he was going through everything that a sinner that dies lost goes through. Amen? They feel that awful, awful feeling of being forsaken forever and forever and forever. Jesus went through that. And as a man, he cried out. He who knew no sin became sin. And he cried out. Amen? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He not only felt those horrible things that sinners feel when they die lost, but he went to the place where sinners go who die lost. Amen? But he did it. Listen to me. Not because he had sinned. He did it because we were supposed to go there. Amen. And he came and went through everything that he went through. So we don't have to go there no more. We don't have to go to the heart of the earth. Amen. In fact, when Jesus was on the cross and he was just about to breathe his last breath, he said, it is finished. Everything that needed to be done was done on the cross. Amen. It was taken care of. Amen. Amen. What else does he need to do? I'm going to preach on John's message a little bit. What else does he need to do? There's a lot of other things. He could have gotten a few more books together of stuff that he did. But he, he knew that if this right here wouldn't get you, there ain't nothing going to get you. Right. Amen. You're going to have to believe this. Amen. Be yeah. convinced of this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. He was buried. He was in the heart of the earth. 
work three days and three nights. You know what he was doing there? Amen. He was taken away from the devil. Yes. Right. Amen. See, every sinner that dies in their sins, the devil has the ability to claim them. Amen. Amen. He is the accuser of the brethren, the Bible calls him. Yeah. Amen. I'll read it for you so you'll understand it in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 through 16. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, we're flesh and blood, aren't we? Right. Huh? For as much as we are flesh and blood, uh -huh. he, talking about God, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Yes. God did. God who is spirit. Yes. John 4, 24 says God is spirit. Amen. And as a spirit, you don't have blood. Right. All right. Amen. So he came in human form by the means of overshadowing a virgin and forming himself, incarnating himself in human form. He did not quit being spirit. Amen. But he Amen. came and manifested himself in a real, genuine human form. Yeah. He didn't take on his, his self the form of an angel. Amen. But he took on himself the seed of Abraham. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise himself took part of the same that through death, you see, as a spirit, he can't die. Right. But when he took on the form of a man, he had human blood inside of him. Yeah. Yeah. And being uh, means that the life of the flesh is in the blood, he could actually die and give his life for us. Amen? Yeah. And as an eternal spirit, he never died. Amen? Come on, he's God and he is man, but he is one. Amen. In John 10 30, I and my Father are one. Yes, he's human. Amen. And God is spirit, but they're not two different people. Amen. It's one God being manifest in human form. Amen. Praise God to be a sacrifice, to be a lamb. Amen. To let death fall upon him, to suffer for us. Amen. To take our suffering, to take our sins. Amen. To go to hell for for us. Amen. So we don't have to go there. Oh, no, somebody the say praise the Lord. Praise God and the devil. Did you know that the devil because of sin had the power of death? That's what that's what the scripture says. Amen. Every sinner amen, that passes from this life in their sins. Amen. That devil tries to claim them. He tried to do it to Moses. He tried to do it. Read Jude. Amen. The devil Disputed about the body of Moses because uh -huh. Moses made an error. Uh -huh. Amen. When he spoke the rock twice. Amen. He wanted to claim him. Amen. But God said, the Lord, through the angel said, the Lord rebuke you. He wouldn't let him have him. Amen. But I want you to know some people that are not right with God, he has ever right access to them. Uh -huh. Amen. But Jesus came, listen to me, to destroy the power of the devil. Amen. To destroy the works of the devil, says in the Gospel of John. And deliver them who through a fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he, God, took not upon himself the nature of angels, there it is again, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Amen. He took on Abraham's descendants by overshadowing the Virgin Mary. Amen. Praise God. But the devil had the power of death, and he still does to people that don't believe in Jesus. Amen. Amen. But he lost something. Jesus went to hell and took something from him. Amen. When he yes. went through, when he went to Calvary on the cross and he descended into the heart of the earth, he took stuff from the devil. Amen. Praise God. Jesus rose from the dead. And in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus came after he rose from the dead and appeared. Uh, to his disciples, Jesus came and spake unto them and said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Amen? Praise God. You know what Jesus was talking about? He's always been God. He's always had all power. But because sin and men's life, he lost power. And then the devil gained that power. Amen? But whenever he went to the cross and tasted death for every man and went to hell, amen, he took that power away from the devil. And now the Lord can do whatever needs done inside of our lives. Because Jesus died on the cross. Amen? He, he has all power in heaven and earth. And so he told his followers, go ye therefore. Amen? You have the ability to go now and do works for the Lord. Amen? Do 
great things for him. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. The preaching of the cross, it is the power of God. Amen. First yes. Corinthians 1.18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. What we're talking about this morning to some people. Amen. It's just foolishness. This right. is all this cross. Right. Talking about the cross and Jesus dying for your sins. And there's a place called heaven. To people is foolishness. To some people it is. But unto us. Amen. Which are saved. Those of us that believe. We know what it is. Come on. It's the power of God. Amen. It is the power of God. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. If somebody takes a hold of it and believes it, it brings power into their lives. Amen. Amen. It brings reconciliation to God. Amen. It brings forgiveness of sins. Amen. It makes sinners into saints. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. It takes and makes the unholy into the holy. Amen. Yeah. Something we weren't that we become. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. It is the power of God. Amen. But Jesus didn't stay dead. He went to the cross. He was buried. But he didn't stay there. Right. Because he had no sins himself. He was able. John already said it. Amen. Jeremiah, in fact, got him quoted this scripture. Revelation 1.18. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Yeah. And have the keys of hell and death. You know nobody else has those keys? That's right. right. Nobody else has those keys. Uh, you know, you can look at Peter. Peter has some keys. Right. Amen. But he didn't have the keys of hell and death. Right. So the only one that can do that is Jesus. Amen. Take those keys. Amen. Nobody has to stay bound in the devil's hell. Amen. Right. Nobody has to. Jesus right. has those keys now. The devil had the power of death, but Jesus has the keys of death and hell now. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. That's why we're preaching Jesus all the time. We're preaching all the time. Repent of your sin. Be baptized in yeah. Jesus' name. The one that died for you. Amen? Come on. You escape from the, the, the clasp that the devil has upon your life Amen. through Jesus. Amen? Amen? You can't get good enough to get this. There's only one person that has the keys of death and hell, and that's Jesus. Amen? Amen. However, whenever he walked on the earth with his disciples, he looked at Peter and asked Peter, he said, Who do men say that I am? Peter said, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, uh, I say to thee, thou Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We don't have the keys to the, of hell and death. Jesus had those, but he gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And those keys were given out on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Whenever they preached Christ for the very first time, and in verse number 37, it says, Now when they heard this, the, those people that were believing, what Peter preached, the death, burial, and resurrection, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall I do? Here's key number one. Amen. Upon believing, you need to repent of your sins. Amen. Then here's key number Number two, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Key number three. He said key. Keys, plural. Amen? These are the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus had the keys to free us, but He gave us the keys to preach that people can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen? And we preach that all the time. We're not a broken record. We just know there's not another gospel to preach. Amen? There's not another message that will get people into heaven. There's not enough gospel that will free people from the bondage of sin and from the devil. And there's not another gospel that will get you into the party gates. Amen? Amen. The keys will unlock the way for you to be saved. Amen? Amen. Remember what we said. What we started off with. In John 20 and 30, many other signs, truly, did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, right. which are not written in this book, but these are written. These are written. You got a book full of them. Amen. These are written for the purpose, right, that, right. Je that you might believe yes. that Jesus is the Christ. He wants you to be convinced about that. That's why I gave you all of these proofs. Amen. 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and they believe in being convinced. Right. Amen. You might have life. Amen. Come on, you might have life. Amen. Yes, sir. The word through there, that means the channel of an act, Strong yes. says. Amen. I hate to use the same analogy, but the city has water out there. Amen. Uh -huh. And we got water in here. But there's pipes that put it in here right. from the city. Right. That's the channel of that act. That's right. That's the channel. To get it from there to there, there's a pipe laid in the ground. That's, right. That's the channel of the act of getting the water in here. Amen. And Jesus has given us his name. Amen. Praise God. He's given us his name so that we can be saved. Amen? Praise God. And that's why Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and, and repentance and preached, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Folks, we got water right back here. Yes. yes we got yes, water. Yes. We're even warm. Yes. Whenever yes. I got baptized, listen to me. Yes. I, well, I went out in the lake. Sister, uh, Sister Wilkins, uncle baptized me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Fishermen all around and all kinds of stuff. I got baptized out there in Belt Lake. Amen. amen. I don't know. I, listen to me. I believe to the point that if if it had been necessary to chop the ice off, I was so serious about this, I would have went out in the ice. Fortunately, it wasn't cold that time of year. But I got baptized out in Belt Lake. I don't know how many fish I killed. But it, you know, I've been baptized. But I got baptized, buried with him in baptism. Amen. Amen. My pastor at that time was Brother Stroud, and he called that name of Jesus over me. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I, I had been baptized wrong one time, but you know, whenever I found out the truth that through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. Amen. Amen. I got his name called over me in water baptism, and when I came up out of that water, I felt like I radiated. I really did. Praise God. Amen. I want you to know something. That we can have life through His name. Yes. yes. All of this is written so that you would believe. Amen. And get baptized in the name of the one that died for you. Amen. Yes. And to get rid of your sins. To wash away your sins. Amen. Yes. And it's all available right here. Right now. Yes. Amen. 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 What else needs done? Right. What else he's done? Come on, what else he's done? Amen. Nothing can take a man or a woman's sins away but that blood that was shed at Calvary. Right. And he has given us his name whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12 Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other. You get baptized in the name of Jesse Ratliff, you'll be a worse sinner. John did a wonderful job preaching this morning. Amen. And you may be so pleased with him, you want to be a follower of John. He, he, he wouldn't let you do it. He may, I want to be baptized in John's name. You know, some people had that problem in 1 Corinthians. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of them were saying, I'm of Paul, and I'm of Apollos. And there was a little division. And Paul said, who died for you? Yeah. That's right. That's Paul didn't die for him. He didn't say to be baptized in Paul's name. In fact, Paul said, I don't even want to baptize unless you said I baptized my own name. But there is a name that they got baptized in. And that's the name of the one that they died, that died for them. Amen. And that's Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> but if you get baptized in John's name, you'll be a worse sinner. Praise God. If you get baptized in the name of Wilkins, he's a mighty fine brother back there. Amen. Brother Wilkins. But he it just make you a worse sinner. Amen. Right. Amen. If you try another way, some people try using the titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's not his name. That's who he is. That's, right. That's, That's right. who he is. Amen. Praise God. That's how I was baptized the first time I was ever baptized. And I realized I misinterpreted that scripture. Yes. And so when I found out that Jesus is that name, Jesus is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Right. And when I got baptized in the name of Jesus, listen to me. Praise God. Amen. Oh. Praise God. Once one of the Gospels, Mark says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. He that believeth not shall be damned. In other words, if you don't get baptized, it's because you don't believe. Amen. All right. Believers get baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. 
I told John this morning, I said, you know, if somebody, if uh, <clears throat> Sydney's here this morning, you're going to have to do the baptizing because I can't pick up over 10 pounds. I don't think anybody here is that light. <laughs> But you can get baptized. It's not who baptizes you. That's right. As much as it is the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. The name of Jesus, the born again experience, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. Of course, repentance is prior to all of that. Amen. Believing in repentance. Getting baptized in Jesus' name is for the remission of sin. Amen. All of that. And for, we're fixing to do communion. Amen. I don't know who's getting that ready, but Emily, is it Emily? But all of that <clears throat> gets you in. You know, I have never put nobody in the church. I haven't never put anybody in the church. People are born into the church. Come into this building that puts you in the church. You're born into the church. The Bible says, by one spirit we're all baptized into one body. And it says that the church is the body of Christ, members in particular. God puts people in the church. Amen? By the spirit baptism. Amen? Praise God. And that only comes through Jesus Christ. Amen? Through that sacrifice. Praise God. We're not preaching ourselves today. We're preaching Christ crucified. Amen? Praise God. It doesn't matter if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're rich. What does matter is if you believe. Amen? Praise God. So, being born again gets you in the church. Being born again, repenting, baptism in Jesus' name, and filling the Holy Ghost, that applies the blood. Remember that song they just sung? The blood applied? The blood applied? Yeah. The blood applied? Whatever the children of Israel were, were in Egypt, the last thing the Lord told them to do before they were free, you take a lamb without blemish, that's representing Jesus, and you take and you kill that lamb, and you put, you apply its blood on the two side porches over its top, and you take that lamb inside, and you completely devour. Roast it with fire. Completely devour. Leave none of it. The blood had to be applied. And the blood of Jesus was applied upon believing the gospel by obeying Acts 2.38. Right. Repenting, baptism in Jesus' name, in the of the Holy Ghost, and taking that lamb inside and completely devouring everything about Jesus. All right. Amen. All right. And you'll be a free people. Amen. Who the Son is set free is free indeed. Amen? Amen? But communion is something that Jesus instituted right before we went to the cross. And this was something that was going to be an ongoing thing. Yeah. Because as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, you know, it's not a matter of just starting out. Amen? Paul said, about the gospel by which you are so saved if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have been believed in vain. In other words, it's not a matter of just starting out, not just getting in the church, but it's continuing in the faith. And so as we partake of communion, that's what we're doing. We don't get baptized over and over again, but we do uh, observe the breaking of the bread and the fruit of the vine as Jesus instructed. The bread represented his broke body for us. And the fruit of the vine represented his spit blood for us. And as these young men are going to serve you, are you going to, why don't we just come up, everybody, anyone that's going to participate in the communion, if you'll come up, let's see what we got here. Yes. Israel's got, praise God, one, one of these. It's all that. Yeah. Oh, it's all one. Okay. Yeah. So those of you that are going to receive communion with us this morning, <clears throat> praise God. Come up and 
get you one of these. And we're going to do this together. Thank you, Lord. turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We can go to the Gospels. But we're going to look at what Paul instructed the Christians in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to uh, Receive communion Amen. together as we read the scriptures. I would encourage you to be very prayerful. Praise God. I'll give you a moment to, to get it open there. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, praise God, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. You can break the bread, symbolizing his body that was broken for us. This do in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Once again, we're remembering, listen, it's not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed abroad upon us through the channel of the act, through Jesus Christ. That shed blood. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming. Amen. And we do this till he comes. Yes. Folks, if there's anybody here that is not born again, I would encourage you. Yes. Again, there's water here yes. that can be taken care of. Yes. It's not just the water, but the water is part of God's plan right. for each and every one of us. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Back, you're not being baptized to join just some secular group. Amen. No. You're, you're being born into the kingdom of God. That's right. The water and spirit birth. And it's between you and the Lord individually. But he's done, like John said, he's done everything. Yes, he has. There's no reason why anybody. That's right. You know the thing that kept the people out of Noah's ark? Simply unbelief. The ones that got in were believers. Simple as that. That's why I said. Amen. It's our faith. Our faith leads us into obedience with God. Amen. And that name is given unto men whereby we must be saved. If you're sick in your body, listen, if you're sick in your body, Take the name of Jesus. Be prayed for in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. The scripture says he's rich to all that calls on his name. That name is important. It's given to us. It's given to us to be baptized in. It's given us to pray in Jesus that you can ask anything in my name. Why? Because it all points that sacrifice. It's all that the way that sacrifice is uh, applied to our lives. Amen. That name. Right. That's Amen. right. Thank you for all coming today, and uh, we pray the Lord will bless you. Yes. Amen. Jeremiah, dismiss us in a word of prayer, would you please? Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Yes. We thank you for allowing us another opportunity, Lord, to gather here this morning. We thank you for all that you have done for each and every one of us. Thank you for your many blessings. Yes, Jesus. And mercy, Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you.